Yeah? Well, good morning, everyone. Did you guys have fun last night? All right. Well, Senator Thompson may not remember, but I remember where I ran into him. We'll save that for another day. Hey, uh, thank you, uh, Chair Downey and uh, the State GOP Executive Committee for having me here this morning. And thank you to uh, all of you for spending your Saturday, beautiful Saturday morning with us. So, if it's time for our state convention, it must be time for another round or two of a little shooting straight with Sheriff Stanek, right? Can you say that? That's right. All right, that's a pretty good theme. So, what county do I live in? What county do you live in? How many sheriffs are there in Minnesota? What? Back to the civics lesson. How many sheriffs are there across the country? <laughs> no, there's 3,104. And they're all coming to Minneapolis on next month, the third week of June, for the National Sheriff's Conference. So, if you see a guy that looks like, where's Bond Clayton? I know he's here somewhere. You see Bond with that big black cowboy hat, big belt buckle, boots? That's what our sheriffs look like across the country. You know, since 2006, I've been elected a sheriff of our largest county with 1.2 million residents covering two of our eight congressional districts. Yes, folks, I win in Eric Paulson's district, and I win in Keith Ellison's district. Diametrically opposed. That's right. And I bet you didn't know we had an endorsed Republican that wins elections in Minneapolis, did you? Nope. Well, I win the votes of Republicans, and I win the votes of Democrats. Now, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. I win in North Minneapolis and in South Minneapolis, in Gold Valley and Hopkins and St. Louis Park, Brooklyn Center, Brooklyn Park. The last election, I carried all 45 cities in Hennepin County. That's not an easy thing to do. You know, that's where we haven't won a legislative seat in many, many years. But I'm here to tell you we cannot give up working to win votes in the most liberal neighborhoods of our state. We need every single vote, Chairman Downey. Yes, we do. Not just for this election, but for every future election as well. So, if this presidential race thing isn't your thing, then go help out a local candidate facing a steep climb against a Democratic incumbent in a tough seat. And I know there's a number of candidates on the audience today that are running and doing the right thing. I'm not ready to concede Hennepin County to the Democrats, are you? No, of course not. Now back to little uh, shooting straight with the sheriff. I bet you didn't know that you're, what you're thinking. Now let's see how close I am. Sheriffs are pretty smart, right? Right? I didn't hear you. All right. So you're all sitting around in some uh, cramped folding chairs, right? Yep. It's a nice but dark convention center, right? It's a beautiful Saturday in May, right? Instead of our uh, fishing rods and a beer, we've got a rules pack in our hands. Am I right so far? Come on, I can't hear you. We're thinking about the guarding, getting the docks back in, maybe the upcoming family vacation, maybe a little graduation, right? Come on, I've been to about 500 of these conventions over the years, just like you. That's exactly what we're doing here this morning. We've got a whole list of candidates and elected officials lined up to speak into the microphone this morning, right? And we want to be polite, and of course we want to listen, but we kind of want to vote and go home, right? I know you do. And what we really want, well, not till we're done, Mr. Chairman. And what we really want to ask all these speakers is what I always want to ask. You ready? Howdy. What have you done for me lately? Can you say that? Go ahead, you can ask me. Well, I'm tired of the talk, and I want action from our elected officials. I'm tired of promises, and I want delivery. So go ahead, ask me again. You should ask me, Sheriff Stanek, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? You guys are very good about following along. Well, I've met with President Obama. No, don't, no booze. This is a good thing. And I told him to keep his hands off our guns. Yep. I told the president that mass shootings in the United States have more to do with untreated mental illness than they do with any imagined gun show loophole, right? 
I met with uh, one of the President's Cabinet members, Jay Johnson. He's the Secretary of Homeland Security. I told him to do his job and enforce our immigration laws, secure our borders, right? Yeah. It's not a job for local law enforcement. We need their help. I met with the FBI director, a guy named James Comey, and I told him, hey, you better get serious about those charges against Hillary, Clear Hillary for her email server, right? Yeah. That's right. And I told him that government should never try to force Apple or any other company to violate our rights of privacy, right? But that's all talk. We want action, right? So ask me again. What have you done for me lately? I collected 28 tons of prescription drugs off the streets to fight opioid abuse across our communities. My deputies pick up and safely dispose of drugs from nine medical drop-off boxes across Hennepin County. And since I took office in 2007 as your sheriff, my deputies have issued over 30,000 gun permits in Hennepin County upholding the Second Amendment rights of those who choose to do so. In fact, last month I opened a third location for applications to meet the huge increase in demand. Our Second Amendment rights can't wait for government red tape, right? This week my detectives are testifying in the largest terrorism case in our nation's history, with seven of those who have pled guilty and three more in trial. I started a community engagement team for outreach to New Americans. How many in this audience are New Americans? I met a couple of them over at Caribou this morning that are coming here to the uh, convention. I know there's several of you out there this morning. And they, you know, they can see that we're a nation of laws. These New Americans live in the greatest nation in the world with freedoms and education and opportunity for all who work hard to support themselves and their families, just like me, just like the senator, just like the chairman, just like all of you. I've implemented and enforced my agency about privacy and technology. We don't use body cams in the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. And yes, we have a UAV. Some people call it a drone. But you know, we do it for the sole purpose of search and rescue, like the missing U of M student earlier this week. But we do so with a court order. I forced our state's Department of Health and Human Services to move mentally ill inmates not into my jail, but out of our jail, and got to get the proper treatment that they need. You know, that's seven things that I've done for you, right? So the next time you see me, I hope you're going to feel free to ask, Sheriff. Well, this week's also National Police Week, folks. So last Friday night, I was in Washington, D.C. for the ceremony to add 252 brave police officers who gave their lives in the line of duty defending their communities and your neighborhoods, including two here from Minnesota. Uh, one was Aiken County Deputy Sheriff Stephen Sandberg, and the other was a DNR officer, Charles Masoner. As president of the Minnesota Sheriff's Association this year, I had the honor to stand on stage amongst a sea of 30,000 candlelights held by families, friends, and colleagues. Not an easy thing to do, but the right thing to do. And I have to say a few words about the great men and women who serve in law enforcement. They deserve our support in their work in Dangerous every day, right? Absolutely. You know, we're engaged in a national conversation about police community relations. And I don't have to tell you there have been several tragedies with officer-involved shootings, and we want to hold all bad cops accountable, but they're the rare exception and not the rule. The officers and the deputies I know and that work for me are working hard to raise their families, and send their kids to college, just like all of you. They volunteer as Lions and Rotarians and coach Little League Baseball. They sing in the church choir, volunteer at school, and run the 5K on Saturday mornings. Some work on the streets, but they're just as likely to work in our personnel, our jails, and our courts. You know, we see our work as a profession and not just a job. We view police work as public service. 33 years of public service as a police officer in this state and I would never give back a single day. I absolutely love what I do, and I love serving the residents of this state. You know, I hope you're all going to agree with me that their lives matter as much as anyone's, right? I need your help, folks. I need you to help reject the message of police versus community. We are part of the community. This year especially, I believe these hardworking Minnesotans are inclined to vote Republican if we can get a few things right. You ready? First, no more big government programs like paid family medical leave 
that take more out of our paychecks. Secondly, you can clap a little louder. I can't hear you that well. No more increases in our gas taxes for roads or light rail. We already pay enough. They need to prioritize their spending. No more increases on license tabs for our cars, our trucks, boats, snowmobiles, ATVs. We already pay user fees. No more efforts to unionize our daycares and our family care attendants. We know how to take care of our families, right? You know, folks, I think as Republicans, we need to be much clearer with Minnesota voters on our message about what we stand for. We need to break down the walls of this party, get rid of the party test and the not conservative enough messaging that gets in the way of winning winnable elections, including in Hennepin County. We need to engage hardworking Minnesotans and, yes, even union members like cops and firefighters, teachers and construction workers. Come on, folks, I've been a union member for 33 years. Am I any different than you, really, at the end of the day? No. We need to engage new citizens to come here and have the opportunity to work and raise their families. We need to do it at our backyard barbecues while fishing on the lakes and water. Look, I run in Hennepin County surrounded by a sea of liberal Democrats. And I could run in the safety of a nonpartisan office. Sheriffs in Minnesota are nonpartisan, correct? Of course we are. I choose to run as a Republican. I'm proud of the eight times I've been elected and the eight times I've been endorsed as a Republican of this great party. My grandparents came here over 100 years ago and settled in North, Northeast Minneapolis. I watched my parents struggle to raise my six brothers and sisters, and when my parents both died at a young age, my siblings and I worked to support each other. I'll never forget where I came from or be grateful for the blessings of freedom. We live in a great country and a great state. It's time for all of us to put actions to words and work to win. So, let me conclude with all this talk of deputies and officers. One of the most important parts of my job as your sheriff, as you can imagine, is finding good quality deputies. And I have to tell you about the most recent interview I had earlier this week. The candidate came in and asked me, he was about 21 years old. He said, what's one, I said, uh, what's one and one? What did he answer? Eleven. I said, well, not exactly, but what I expected, he was technically right. So then I asked him, name two days of the week that begin with T. And his answer was? Today and tomorrow. Again, a surprise, but you know, he was technically correct. And I have to be fair in my interview, right? So thinking this probably wasn't the best candidate, I gave him something a little bit harder. Who killed Abraham Lincoln? He said, I don't know. Yeah, well, I thanked him for applying and told him he should go home and work on that one for a while. And later that day, I went to lunch at uh, Perkins over on 494, and I came across the same guy. I overheard him saying to friends, uh, hey, the interview went great. First day in the job, and the sheriff asked me to work on a murder case. Look, only the very best works for uh, Sheriff Stanick. Now that's some straight shooting. I want to thank you for uh, serving as delegates and for your important work. You know, before I leave, though, and I know I've taken more than enough time, but I appreciate the opportunity this morning, there's uh, a young man and woman. So you guys had a great time last night, right? No, you did. Come on. I saw you at the reception. So there's a guy named Andrew DeYoung and Abby Bonin who are here. Now, this is party unity at its finest. Four years ago, at the convention, in St. Cloud, they met. In the interest of party unity, they are getting married next week. That's a big deal. Are they here yet? They were just, uh, they're just sitting up. Stand up. Stand up, Andrew. Right there, Andrew and Abby. Thank you very much.